If you want to learn how to build a sensitivity analysis into your next real estate financial model, make sure to stick around because that's exactly what we're going to cover in today's video. For first dibs on all new real estate financial modeling and career training videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Now, a sensitivity analysis can be a really helpful tool in real estate financial modeling if you want to test different scenarios in your real estate deal in case things don't go exactly the way that you planned. So by the end of this video, you'll know how to build a sensitivity analysis into any real estate financial model and which variables you may want to sensitize in order to figure out how your deal is going to perform. So essentially what a sensitivity analysis does is it tests what happens to a certain variable or output based on one or two different inputs and if those inputs change based on the range that you select for the sensitivity. So in real estate, this is generally going to measure things like what happens if our rental growth rate is different than what we projected? Or what happens if our exit cap rate is different than we projected? Or what if our vacancy rate is higher or lower than what we actually put in our model, what does that actually do to our main investment return metrics? So internal rate of return, equity multiple, or cash on cash return. So what we're gonna do is jump into Excel, walk through an already pre-made basic model, and build out a sensitivity analysis on that deal. So let's jump into Excel now. All right, so now we're in Excel, and what we have here is a sample model. We have a sample model of a commercial real estate deal where we have some operating metrics, some acquisition and sale metrics, and then we have our investment return metrics that are going to be calculated from all of these inputs and then all of these outputs. So everything in blue text is going to drive everything else in the model. Now, what we really wanna do here is sensitize our returns. So we wanna know what happens if our operating metrics change or if our acquisition and sale metrics change, how will that affect our investment return metrics. So the information we have here is we have the operating metrics, the property square footage. Now the square footage isn't really gonna make sense to sensitize because that's not going to be changing throughout our hold period. The rent per square foot per year, that's going to be the amount that we're renting for today. And so sensitizing that probably doesn't make all that much sense either. Now annual rent growth, three and a half percent. That's an assumption for the future. So we may wanna know what happens if our annual rent growth isn't actually three and a half percent, it's actually two and a half percent, or in a positive scenario, four and a half percent. So that may be a variable that we want to sensitize. Same thing, expenses per square foot per year. Those are our expenses today. Annual expense growth at two and a half percent. That could also be a variable that we may want to sensitize. And then vacancy rate, that's also an assumption going forward. So we may want to add that as well. Then we have our acquisition and sale metrics. So our purchase price, which is going to be, again, not a forward assumption. We're going to know what this purchase price is going to be. Our closing costs, which will be directly related to that purchase price. But then the exit cap rate. The exit cap rate is going to determine what we can actually sell this property for at the end of year 10. So the exit cap rate is definitely something that we may want to consider adding to our analysis. Then we have our cost of sale, which are directly related to that exit cap rate, and that's going to calculate our unlevered cash flow. And the unlevered cash flow is just saying that there's not debt on the property. So then we have our investment return metrics here. So we have our unlevered IRR, so our IRR without debt, unlevered equity multiple, so our equity multiple without debt, and then our average cash on cash return. So what we need to do in order to create a sensitivity analysis is first decide what investment return metric we want to sensitize. And usually that's going to be the most important investment return metric and also which operating and acquisition and sale metrics we want to use. So what I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to sensitize my annual rent growth and my exit cap rate on my unlevered internal rate of return. So I want to see what happens to this internal rate of return number that's 7.72% now if my annual rent growth is different than what I projected and if my exit cap rate is different than what I projected. So let's start over here and let's actually build this out right now. So the first thing that I need to do to start off a data table is just set this cell equal to my unlevered internal rate of return. 
So I'm going to set that to B16 and hit enter. And that's going to be the variable that I want to sensitize. Now for a two variable data table, which is what we're going to do because we're sensitizing two variables, we want to make sure that this formula is in the intersection of the row and column that we're going to build. So as with any other table, it's really going to look like a box. So what we need to do is essentially surround that box with our operating assumptions. So let's start with our annual rent growth and let's put our annual rent growth assumption right here. So right now we have three and a half percent that we assume is going to be our annual rent growth. And what I want to do is see what happens if that increases by 50 basis points or 0.5% or if it decreases by 50 basis points or 0.5%. So what I'm going to do is set this equal to 4% and I'm going to set this equal to four and a half percent. And I'm going to move back here, set this equal to 3% and set this equal to two and a half percent. And I just wanna make sure that my formatting is all consistent. So I'm gonna make sure that's set up. So now we have the first part of our data table, which is going to show our annual rent growth. So now from here, I wanna include my exit cap rate. So what happens if my exit cap rate isn't 5.75%, it's actually 6.75% or even lower than 5.75%. Well, what I wanna do is start here. I'm gonna start with this at five and a quarter and i'm just going to add 0.25 percent and i'm just going to copy that down until i get up to 6.25 percent and i want to make sure all of my formatting is consistent so i'll set these all equal to percentages out to two decimal places so now we have our basic sensitivity analysis set up where we're actually going to be able to build a grid to see what the effect is at the intersection of each of these values. So we'll be able to see what happens if rent growth is four and a half percent per year, but the exit cap rate is six and a quarter percent, or if the rent growth is two and a half percent per year and the exit cap is five and a quarter percent. So to do this, what I can do is highlight this entire table. So everything here, and then I can hit alt a w t. And when I hit alt A W T that brings up the data tab and sends us into the what if analysis, and then we can use our data table. So within a data table, Excel is going to ask us for a few inputs. So the first is going to be the row input cell. So the row input cell is going to be the row input that we have up here. So this row is going to be referring to my annual rent growth. So all I need to do is click on annual rent growth and that's going to be B4 and that's the first part of this. The second part is to add our column input cell. So our column input cell is going to be our exit cap rate. So I'm gonna set this equal to exit cap rate. And then all I need to do is hit okay. And when I hit okay, you'll see that you get all of the same values. So what I need to do is calculate this automatically. So to do this, all you need to do is hit F9. And when you hit F9, the calculations will be working correctly. So from here, this still looks pretty sloppy. So what I wanna do is just make sure that these are all percentages. So I'm gonna set these equal to percentages and out to two decimal places so we can see this a little bit more clearly. And that is our sensitivity analysis. Now, just to make this a little bit more clear, what we can do is add some background color to the outside of this table. So I can make this maybe dark blue and make the text white and I can bold that as well and then I can add maybe an outside border here so alt HBS will give me an outside border and I'll do this out here too so alt HBS will give me an outside border there so now we have a sensitivity analysis so we can see what happens to our unlevered IRR if our rent growth is 4% and our exit cap is 5.75% what happens if our exit cap is six and a quarter and our rent growth is 3%, we can see all of the different values. So you can see in the worst case scenario, our lowest value is gonna be 5.27%, and our highest value is going to be 10.17%. So as a real estate investor, you need to decide what you can live with. If you think this worst case scenario is possible at 2.5% rent growth and a six and a quarter exit cap, are you okay with a 5.27% internal rate of return? And if not, you probably want to adjust your purchase price. So there you have it. Now you know how to build a sensitivity analysis into your real estate financial model, regardless of what your financial model looks like. 
Now, if you wanna learn more about real estate financial modeling, definitely check out my free three-part real estate financial modeling crash course. And again, you can grab that for free in the link in the description below. So if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with anyone else who might find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in another video.